Welcome to another module of Science with TTC. Today we're going to look at how science keeps us healthy, but not any particular science, one that you may not even expect, but keeps us healthy every day. It helps us avoid being infected. It helps doctors analyse damage in your body. Next patient, please. We are going to be looking at waves and how they keep us healthy. Waves. Waves. How do waves keep us healthy, do I hear you ask? Well, firstly, to answer that, we need to know what waves there are. We will be looking at two different types of waves today. On the left is electromagnetic waves, which includes things such as light. And on the right, sound waves, which consist of vibrations which travel through a substance. Let's look at electromagnetic waves first. This here electromagnetic spectrum shows all the waves in, well, the electromagnetic spectrum. Starting off with radio waves, which have the highest wavelength with the lowest frequency. Next up is microwaves, which have a slightly lower wavelength, but a high frequency. Use these in microwaves, well, obviously, to cook your meals. Microwave ovens use microwave radiation to heat up water molecules inside the food. Water molecules heat up so much that most harmful bacteria are destroyed in the process. Next channel, we have infrared rays, which help you change the channel on your TV. But enough of them, here's the star of the show, x-rays, which can be used for medical examinations. To explain further, here's a video inside a video. Videoception! <laughs> Next patient, please. Take a seat. What happened to your head? Well. Basically, a piano dropped in my head. I guess you can see you're feeling a bit off key. X rays have special properties that allow us to look inside the body to analyse an injury. Here we can put a sheet of special photographic film behind Jonah's head. We can then fire some X ray radiation at it. The photographic film turns black when X rays hit it, but because Jonah's skull absorbs most of these X rays, an image of Jonah's skull appears on the film. The doctor can then analyse this to see where the damage has been caused so that the surgery can take place. And now that our unlucky patient is feeling better, he can now go and sue the company that dropped the piano on him. Hello and welcome to the Science Clark News. Our top story today is a man who, get this, uses CT scans on his sheep. But what exactly is a CT scanner? Let's find out. CT stands for Computed Tomography. This means that it involves a computer which builds a 3D image out of what it scans. The CT scanner works just like an X-ray machine. The sheep is passed through a rotating X-ray emitter and scanner. Because it rotates around the sheep as it passes through, many X-ray images are taken at different angles. The computer on the scanner can then compile these to create a full 3D model of the sheep inside out, which is what the farmer uses to examine his flocks, muscles and fat. The farmer can then breed the sheep with the most desirable traits. Going back to Professor Magnus Spectrum's presentation, there is one problem with using x-rays continuously. But, uh, don't break your face too many times because they can't get harmful. You see, they cause mutations in the cell, so you better watch out. There is an alternative to looking inside the body that isn't as potentially harmful as x-rays. It is possible to look inside the body using sound waves. These are usually high frequency waves that are too high to hear. This is called ultrasound. 
A doctor can place an ultrasound transducer somewhere on the body to send a sound pulse through. The transducer will also receive any echoes that are reflected back. Because of the shape of the objects, different parts of the wave are reflected back at different times, and the computer uses this to generate an image. This ultrasound scan of the heart is called an echocardiogram. It is used by doctors to see if our heart is healthy, but most importantly, it doesn't cause any further damage. That's all we've got time for today on this module. Join us next time, where we will be...